Hello! In this video, I'll be showing you how to use a wired Steam Link connection to stream from your Steam Deck to your iPad or MacBook. You can actually use this method for any tablet or computer, but I'm going to specifically be covering Apple devices here. A couple of months ago, I made a video showing the setup of using an iPad like an external monitor, but it was wireless and therefore less performant. A lot of people asked for this follow-up on the wired version, so I've finally come around to make it. So in this video, I'll be covering why you might want to do this in the first place. Then I'll talk about the performance of this particular setup in a couple of games. I'm going to jump into a tutorial on how to set it up, and then I'm going to talk about some of the issues and uh, fixes and potential improvements for the setup. Okay, so why would you want to do this anyway? The first and most obvious reason is that you can play on bigger screens. If you hook the Steam Deck up to an iPad Pro 11, you get an over 50% increase in screen size. If you instead use a MacBook, you can actually go over twice the screen size. Now this won't increase your usable resolution out of the Steam Deck, which is important to understand. The Steam Deck streams at 1280 by 800, and that'll just get scaled to the resolution of your screen. I travel light, and in this video I'm actually in a hotel in Thailand. When I pack my bags, I try to minimize carrying extra stuff and make sure that my belongings are all multi-use. My tech kit usually involves my work laptop, iPad, and Steam Deck. I always carry my iPad for personal stuff, browsing, watching movies, reading. So it's a natural fit to want to use the Steam Deck with the larger iPad screen. Also, the iPad Magic Keyboard functions as a stand. So if you're playing with another person, it can make a big difference. I'm a software developer, and sometimes I want to work on personal projects on the go. I've tried apps like Blink.sh or VS Code.dev, but these are just not full developer environments. By hooking up the Steam Deck to my iPad, I can use the iPad Magic Keyboard and mouse and have a full regular Linux environment on my iPad. I tend to use Visual Code Studio with remote SSH extension, which works flawlessly here. This really unlocks some awesome possibilities for the iPad. Even sometimes some mundane tasks like firing off some emails or organizing documents is just way easier with a Linux desktop. Next, let's talk about performance. First off, I think it's important to say that you should always prefer HDMI to the setup. The deck is built to work with HDMI very easily and run it at low latency. If you prefer to carry a portable HDMI monitor, it will simply work better. I'm just personally trying to avoid carrying more than I have to, and it feels silly carrying another screen when I have an iPad right here. Now, that being said, the wired Steam Link performance is great, so let's jump into two games I've been playing as of late for some real simple tests. So the first game I'm going to be talking about is Vampire Survivors. Um, my game mode settings have a FPS limit of 60 FPS. In the bottom left of the screen, you can see the stream is totally by 800 at 60 FPS. Is less than a millisecond of input latency and display latency is in the 20s. You can see in the top left the game is mostly smooth at 60 FPS, but the game will start to drop frames as things ramp up and more enemies are on screen. Overall, it feels very responsive. The Witcher 3 here is set up on all medium settings with low post-processing. Game mode is FPS limited to 45. One of the nice things about Steam Link is it will dynamically adjust the stream frame rate to match your deck. In this particular area, you can see the display latency is in the 30 milliseconds range, but that's going to vary area to area. Subjectively, it feels nice and responsive, but The Witcher 3 is a floaty game. All right, let's get into how to set this up. Some sort of mouse will likely make this easier for you, but it can be done with just the Steam Deck touchpads. First, you're going to want to wire them together with an Ethernet cable. In this particular setup, I'm using two USB-C hubs with gigabit Ethernet. Any USB Ethernet adapter should work. You likely will want to use a hub with power delivery so you can charge these devices while you are gaming. So just because they're plugged together doesn't mean they know how to talk to each other. There is no router here, so we're going to set up a link local connection. You'll need to boot into desktop mode, navigate to system settings, then connections. You should see a wired connection there. Go to the IPv4 tab and change the method to link local. Now if you look at your iPad and click Ethernet, you should see it has an IP in the 169 range. This will look similar on a MacBook. Now, boot back into gaming mode. You should see a wired connection for your Steam Deck now in the game mode menus. On your device, you'll need to install the Steam Link app and pair up to the Steam Deck. Once it's paired, you can start to tweak and test your settings. You'll want to tweak your settings to your own liking. I prioritize latency and frames over all else, so I set the video to fast and the frame lane limit to 60 FPS. I find that setting a fixed bandwidth limit is important as well. I think Steam Link will try to capitalize on any available bandwidth, which increases latency and reduces in-game performance. I've had the best experience between quality and latency at 30 to 40 megabytes per second. You can also enable performance overlays while you're tweaking and find whatever works best for you. At this point, you're good to go. 
I like to hook up a separate PS5 controller to the Steam Deck so I can enjoy a wireless experience. Just remember to reorder your controllers in the game mode UI to make the PS5 controller player one. Next, let's cover some of the issues I ran into and talk about potential improvements. If your iPad is connected to Wi-Fi, the Steam Link application may not find your wired device, or may use the Wi-Fi network instead of the more performant wired connection. In order to make sure you are wired, turn off Wi-Fi while you connect up to ensure it is over the wired interface. It's a bit annoying, but there's no easy way to disable the deck screen. So if you want to use the Steam Deck as your controller, you're going to have the screen distracting you. Hopefully this is a feature toggle that can be added to the Steam Link application. I've also successfully used HDMI headless dongles to disable the screen completely, but it's a chore. Although Steam Link works to stream the desktop, it's far from ideal. The mouse cursor is way too large and can block what you are clicking. It's also just not easy to scale the iPad up to a custom resolution. I was eventually able to get custom resolutions to work using XRander to make a virtual custom display. I'm hoping in the future Steam Link will improve in this area, but I doubt it will be a priority. I've heard that there are some good VNC viewer applications that can make this a lot easier, so maybe I'll follow up on that. This setup is not for everyone, and its practicality is limited. I'm definitely not using this setup on a frequent basis. However, I do like the possibilities here, and maybe this will become more seamless in the future with updates from Valve or the software from the community. The multifunctional nature of the Steam Deck is very exciting, and I'm happy to be exploring all of its possible uses. It really is awesome to see Linux running on an iPad working with a Magic Keyboard. Let me know if you think the setup would be useful to you. Is it not quite there yet? Would you be interested in a video on VNC applications? Also, if you have any tips or ideas about improving this setup, definitely drop it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.